Hey, Fat Mike. Fat Mike. During the summer of 88, while Fat Mike was still grinding through college, NoFX scored an invite to rock out on our European tour, specifically in Germany. Some of the shows were a total bust, and he was dead set on ditching it all to become a roadie for Operation Ivy back in LA. Yet, after jamming to suffer by bad religion, he decided that no effects had to stop sucking. But, well, that took some time. If I want the beer, I don't want it here. I might be the show, cause it took us. But it ain't been fun, wasn't very long. Fuck it till we die. No, no, still no problems first. Piss break? I don't know what I sounded like that. Fuck, I forgot that one. Sounds called no problems, Eric. I got a pee. Alright. What? Shut No problems. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what song can we do that day? Yes, Dave has to piss. Do a little puppet. During that stretch, while Fat Mike was juggling between rocking out with no effects, wrapping up college and cranking out tunes, he witnessed drummer Eric Sandy getting into all sorts of crazy antics and spiraling into heroin addiction. It was the era of the Moran Brothers, a chapter Fat Mike would later dive into with vivid detail in the song bearing the same name. Sandin and DJ were notorious for their outrageous antics, especially after the first show with El Jefe at Gilman Street. Strung out and fueled by chaos, they stole a van, careening through the streets, colliding with anything in their path. They stole the van and the kid was sleeping in the back seat. It was Green Day singer with only 16 or 17 years of age. Billy Joe Armstrong went from peacefully sleeping to utterly terrified. He actually was a hostage during that time. <laughs> Tour, they didn't shy away from stealing and engaging in unsavory pranks on other bands. This ranged from soiling pillows of generous hosts to proliferating belongings for a quick heroin fix. <laughs> Their wild escapades included a moment of drug-induced inspiration when they tattooed tits and booze on their toes, only to realize they had misspelled it. The marks from that impulsive decision remain etched on them to this day. <laughs> Hey 
His antics contributed to no effects gaining a notorious reputation and the other bands harboring resentment. This, in turn, solidified Fat Mike's position as the king of shit-talking within the music scene. Even if he wasn't one of the Moran brothers, as they cleaned up and ditched their moronic ways, Mike never quit being a jerk. Sandin himself became his favorite victim. Nobody likes this song. This song's about our drummer because he has not had any alcohol in 20 years. Uh, he hasn't done heroin in over 20 years, right? He's got, he's, he's got his shit together. He's an excellent drummer. Europeans, you know, they don't speak English very well. I don't know what their problem is. I think it's quite rude. We come to their country to play, and they don't have the decency to learn English. <laughs> wow. On stage, he talks smack about other bands. Slagwagon, they squirted me with water because they think I'm, I'm mean. You know what? Nick Cave fucking sucks. That band Skunk and Assy. Skunk and Assy. I fucked a singer. Wait, are Smashing Pumpkins playing? Hey, Billy Corgan, fuck you! Cold Sun. Hey! I like that band. I like that band. I like that song. And that guy's dead! I'm the biggest assholes are the Arctic Monkey! You know what? Even our worst song is better than any placebo song. You're making fun of the bouncing soul. No, I'm making fun of fucking seven seconds. Okay, this song is for Dave Mustaine. It's called Leaving Jesus Land. You know the singer? The singer, her name is Shirley. I fucked the hell out of her backstage. Crash their sets. Even the fans were on spare like the time he ended them a bottle claiming it was tequila, only for it to be his own pee. This all went down when he took on the persona of Koki the Clown. Before you leave, I made what, what a little TV? show for y'all on TV, what so I hope you enjoy it. Have, you know, you're supposed to look different, but that's not punk, dude. That's just weird. You look like a homeless person. Where's your, where's your girlfriend? Is she at home in the burka? That guy, would somebody fucking pinch him or punch him? Pinch, pinch him and punch him. You're fucked, dude. Your girlfriend wanted to see no offense, and you're stuck here. While wrangling with the Moran brothers, Fat Mike managed to graduate from college. As for NoFX, they went through three second guitar players during that time, transitioning from a clunkier metal sound to a poppier vibe. We tell FA 91. This song's like a Green Day song. It's like a Green Day song. FX was hitting the road worldwide, racking in big bucks. With multiple albums out, they started chasing checks for another K each. Plus earnings from touring and merch. Come 93, with Nirvana leading the commercial success wave, they figured out that having killer songs mattered more than whether they suck. It's been 15 years. Get a lot of ass in the gym, yeah, so it's better ass going on, what I'm gonna do now that he can't drink. The doctor said, I'm gonna think about my sins. I must think about my sins. I'm gonna do something now. 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 I'm gonna do something now.
Teaming up with his wife, Mike kicked off Fat Records, a label that eventually racked in a cool million dollars in a single year. They catapulted other bands into the spotlight, like Propagandi. <laughs> No use for a name. Oh, and the iconic short music for short people compilation. In fact, here are my favorites. After dropping Punk in Droblik in 94, every NoFX member banked at least a quarter million in advance from sales, plus another fat stack on tours. This continued until the 2003 record war on terrorism, which became another financial success. Throughout those years, Fat Mike combined all that with label money, amassing his own millions as punk gained traction. They even turned down a million dollar offer to open for Blink-182. Oh, that's true, I forgot to mention, Blink-182 actually owns their sound in cages and better on stage and all They're coming to town, and it's a band called No Effects, and 3,000 people are showing up, and it's about ready to the, the building's about ready to collapse with energy. And I remember going down there and just going, "Holy shit!" They were so funny, No Effects in particular, and it was so raw. I mean, they would stop a song and point at each other and try to figure out who fucked up. And I was just like, "Wait, you can do that?" They would just make up a song on the spot. It was X-rated at times, and it was pathetic at times, but it was always charming and authentic. I walked away from that event specifically saying, "I didn't know music could do that." As I was saying over the years, Fat Mike. Mike played his cards right, investing in brands, real estate, and settling into a swanky multi-million dollar mansion in San Francisco. He then sold that mansion and bought another one. However, last year he and the band wrecked it. It was valued at more than five million dollars.
In 2023, he moved to Las Vegas where he opened the Punk Rock Museum. Another million dollar investment for the Beverly Hills Punk, who once squatted and shared an apartment with several other people, making himself a millionaire through hard work, creativity and giving only 60% or so.